tell the Lord you are grateful to be hearing his word that is giving you a good life a good future both on earth and in heaven thank him for the knowledge you are receiving very freely you are paying nothing for this knowledge but the knowledge itself is a gift from god to you in jesus name we pray our divine father we are grateful because of this knowledge you have freely given to us it's because you want us to live a good and successful life a peaceful and victorious life you want a bright future for us to have young men and young women before you who have many years more to live on earth all things being equal according to the grace you have available for them you want them to have a good future so that nothing disturbs them but the praise and worship of god the service of god serving the lord in a pure conscience i'm asking jesus grant a deep understanding of this truth in their lives and grant them to live by this truth walk by this truth walk by this truth in jesus name thank you lord for answering in jesus name we pray we can be seated beware of repercussion in your later end beware of repercussion in your later end life in the world is put into laws principles laws rules laws truths and there is the law of repercussion it is also called the law of recompense the law you have many laws in sciences we have the law of gravity the law of gravity says whatever you throw up to the air will come back to the ground throw a stone to the air the stone will come down that's the law of gravity so there's so many other laws guiding life and one of these laws is the law of repercussions the law of recompense what is this law saying the law states that the evil a man does against others will return to him directly or indirectly in one way or the other in his lifetime or after his lifetime in his lifetime and after his lifetime by this law then it means the evil you did yesterday's will come up in the course of your life in this world cast a bread or cast your bread upon the waters you will see it after many days it's a law 
anything that dies in the water will surface to the top of the water after some days be it fish who that naturally lives in the water or any animal thrown into the water it first sinks in dies gets sucked with the water then comes to the top of the water it is a law it is a law every dead thing in the water will be seen on top of the water after some days so every evil thing you did will come up after you will come up and appear after some days there's another law it says your sin shall find you out what you are hiding will eventually get exposed now or later in this world or oh, and after this world with this you already are thinking what about the abortion that i did it shall show up the implication of it shall show up the guilt of it shall show up the evil you have done by that shall show up it is also called the law of sowing and reaping whatever a man sows that shall he also reap the law of repercussion look at it in the book of galatians galatians chapter 6 galatians Chapter 6, verse 7, and verse 8. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. why is the bible said be not deceived is because sometimes it delays to come and hunt after you it delays what you have done takes time to delay i mean to come up it appears it is delayed to the point that something it will not follow them anymore but it will follow you in fact it has gone ahead to wait for you it has gone ahead to wait for you in fact after your death that one is sure hundred percent after your dead hundred percent you will face it it's not possible by the way god made this life that evil will not be punished it's not possible though hands join in hands to block it the wicked shall not go unpunished though hands join in hands people encycle it not to permit anything we tighten our way nobody must pass through nobody must get out whichever way but judgment will come for that which you have done that one is perfect 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 some people die you don't appear to see the reward of what they have done on earth maybe they just suffered in part and you didn't see the bible says some men sin go before them for judgment some men 
it follows after some people when they commit something evil quickly it appears everybody hears about it judgment comes to them upon immediately but others hey it's more terrible it got it allows him to finish let him leave the place that thing will come after after you have shifted from that place then that thing you have been covering will follow after you have left the earth then that thing you have been covering will go and wait for you in the judgment the law of sowing and reaping all stubbornness shall be rewarded all thievery shall be rewarded judged all immorality shall be judged all whatever whatever everything all lies shall be judged everything it is only the time of the judgment and for judgment sure so be not deceived god is not mocked don't say ah i'm so smart <laughs> you are deceiving who you want to laugh at god that you can do evil in his kingdom do evil in his world and go free it's not possible it's not god is not mocked there is a record book following after you writing down every evil that you are doing and they shall appear before you look at it in the book of revelation revelation chapter 20 verse 11 to verse 15 and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and the dead and hell delivered up the dead which were in it and they were judged every man according to his works can you see and dead and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire you see and the books were opened and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their lifestyle books are already written and those are the books of god's record over your life those books contain evil done in the air when you flew up to the air evil done on top of mountains when you went to the top of mountains to do them evil done on top of trees evil done on the earth evil done in those private houses uncompleted building evil done in the hotels evil done in the sea when you went underwater to commit those things if all recorded for all things you have done are exposed before god the lord will give you the sin some of the sins you have forgiven the sins the the, the pictures the occasions you have forgotten them because your mind is too small to carry all things he will show you the law of repercussion the law of recompense that's the scripture expression of this law in scripture i've given you one whatsoever a man sows that shall he also reap 
That is the law. Verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that uses his tongue, uses his eyes, uses his hands, uses his mind, uses his body to commit evil, shall receive judgment, corrupt, he shall, he shall receive corruption, judgment, decay. Punishment. Punishment. It's not necessarily by the government or by any law court. God has set it. Sometimes you can bribe your way. Sometimes you can receive a kind of someone interceding for you and they, you escape. Or else, maybe you were taken to prison. And the corruption of this world, the evil of this world, can exchange a soul for you. Someone else is labeled with what you did and they whisked you out of the prison. When you are meant to die, when you were meant to be condemned, they whisked you out of prison and an innocent soul was made to replace you. Have you escaped? You have not. You have not. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. You're going about fornicating, aborting, fornicating, aborting is waiting for you in this life. It's waiting for you in the life to come. It's waiting for your life. You'll pay for it. You will stand for it. You will be ashamed for it one day. Bitter shame. Great shame. For the light told. You will feel it. You will see it. So, that's what we are saying. Law of recompense. It's also the pit you dig for others you shall fall into it you dug the pit for others but the repercussion will come back to you you will fall into it the law of repercussion you will fall into it when the time of catching you come, you cannot escape. It is called the evil day in your life. There is an evil day. You cannot escape that evil day. I don't know what period in your life that evil day will appear. I don't know, but God knows it's going to be a hard time. The evil day will come in an evil time. In the time of the prime of your life. In the time you greatly need peace and joy. In the time, in the time, in the time. God knows when. God knows when. In the book of Psalm 7 verse 15 and 16. Psalm 7. Verse 15 and 16. The Bible tells us, saying, He made a pit and digged it and is falling into the ditch which he made. His mischief shall return upon his own head and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pit. Can you see scripture? He made a pit and digged it for others to catch others and is falling into the ditch which he made. Made in wickedness against others. You will fall there. You have been making pits. For people to fall, your own turn will come. You will fall there. He that kill it with a sword shall die by the sword. 
His mischief shall return upon his own head. The evil you plan against somebody, it shall come on you. It shall come on you. And his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. This violence you're doing on the roadside. This violence you're doing in the villages. This violence you're doing in the town. It shall come. You will be caught and violence will come upon you. Violence. We're going for gradually forward. Violence will come upon your life. Because you love violence, give him violence. He loves to do evil, give him evil. Evil proceeded, wickedness proceeded from the wicked. You love to do wickedness, receive wickedness. Your turn is coming. Your turn is coming. It's a law. The law of repercussion. The law of recompense the law of sowing and reaping again it is expressed in this way yes the wicked shall be turned to hell the wicked is a recompense it's a repercussion of what you have done hell in this life hell in the life to come Psalm 9, verse 17. Psalm 9, verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell. That is the recompense. That is the result of the reaping. Reaping of evil. Reaping because of your wickedness. You shall be turned into hell. Life shall be bitter for you in this life, in the future. And after death, hellfire. It may appear apparently that, oh no, you, all you have been doing, you have lived in it for all these 20 years. You have lived out for 50 years. For the, forget it. Evil re recompense is coming. It's even terrible that he has not yet come. Where is he waiting? He's waiting for an evil day in your life. Sometimes in your old age, it will come. Sometimes in your old age, that will come. You will remember. You will remember. Yes. The, God, the word of God. What your tongue is saying. The evil you use your tongue to say to others. Is there repercussion? Yes, there's repercussion. Of the lies you tell. Backbiting and gossip. Evil speaking, causing trouble with your tongue, and you say, My tongue is my own. Psalm 12. Psalm 12. Yeah. Let's read verse 2 to verse 4. They speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart. Do they speak? The Lord shall cut off flattering lips, and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said, with our tongue, we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Yes. You use your tongue to tell lies to get money. Tell lies to do this. Tell lies against innocent people. Is there repercussion? Sure. As sure as the law of gravity. As sure as the law of sowing and reaping. Look at it in Psalm. Talking about repercussion. 
it is there in Psalm 120 verse 1 to verse 4 Psalm 120 verse 1 to verse 4 the Bible says in my distress I cried unto the Lord and he helped me deliver my soul O Lord from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue what shall be given unto thee O O what shall be done unto thee thou false tongue yes I know what shall be given to you sharp arrows of the mighty with coals of juniper yes woe is me that has sojourned in mercy that I dwell in the tents of Kedah what shall be given to you burning fire burning fire coals of fire your tongue shall burn with fire the, the rich man that was in hell that deceived many people to get money deceived many and destroyed their lives he said my tongue is set on the fire of hell yes you saw you should reap his emphasis was on his tongue but that was the organ he used well to for his riches that was the instrument he used to be rich lying leaves and it was set on the fire of hell it was burning Saint Lazarus to cool my tongue what about your eyes are they not burning was it's not your head burning they all center on my tongue because I used it for deceit and lies yes yes now unfortunately children suffer because of their parents unfortunately i'm saying repercussions the unfortunate thing is that your children can reap the repercussion it will follow you to your children to your children's children to your children's children's children to your children 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 children's children who are you yes because of you your generation repercussion the percussion of evil the return of evil you alone cannot even bear it he has to spray it upon those who have your blood in exodus chapter 20 exodus chapter 20 i read from verse 1 Exodus chapter 20 verse 1 and God spake all these words saying I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage thou shalt have no other gods before me thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for i the lord thy god am a jealous god visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me that's God when I come to punish you are too small I spread it to your children to the third and, of, and fourth generation with the repercussion of your wickedness when the, the sowing time comes did you not plant a green when it goes up how many greens do you reap so it's not one green anymore it must be spread there are too many greens now that came up as 
a, as, as, as the implication of what is sown too many grains now you sow one, one piece of corn it grows up and brought how many pieces of corn that is it now I visit the iniquities of, of sinful man upon his sinful children to the third and to the fourth generation it means some of this hard time people have in the world didn't start in their time it started with their father forefather great grandfather great grand grandfather they they were insufficient for that iniquity it spread and to their third generation to their fourth generation they're suffering the same thing because they're all sinners those children are all sinners so spread it of what use are they and then your father does his own this one does his own that's when life is terrible I pray that that cursed generation will end with you I say it will end with you because you're going to take a different course now you're going to take a different lifestyle now you're going to remove that uniform from your life you're going to remove that case from your life your children shall be free your children's children shall be free your children's children children shall be free This law has been there, but my people perish because of, because of lack of knowledge. They think they can be not deceived. God is not mocked. <laughs> you won't laugh at God. He created this world for you to do sin and go free. Hmm. Yes. That's what he's saying. Now, who is the one that masterminds the law of recompense the law of repercussion who is the one organizing it who is the one on it is god himself in fact he told me leave it for me i will handle he told his children leave the wicked people for me don't think to do anything but you are insufficient Whatever you would do to him is not enough for me. I will handle them. God himself is the one in charge of recompense. Is the one that organizes the repercussion. In Romans chapter 12 verse 19. Romans chapter 12 verse 19. Here the Lord says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. I am the one handling that. Leave it. Don't go and do it. In the Old Testament, he said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, whatever. But now he said, leave that. That is just a minor thing. I will handle the completeness of judgment over the wicked in your life. I'll handle it. Although I know, I know the various causes of the wickedness. I know who, why he did what he did. I know, and I know the various rewards that are equivalent to that evil. So leave judgment to me. Leave judgment to me. I will repay. They cannot go unpunished. They cannot mock at me. They cannot treat my children in that way and be free. Just leave the matter to me. I will handle it. Yes, Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 8. Yes, the Bible tells us here saying, If thou seest 
the oppression of the poor and violent perverting of judgment and justice in a province marvel not at the matter for he that is higher than the highest regarded and there be there be higher than they if you see the poor oppressed the wicked justify in the court of law the judge is not doing that which is righteous to condemn the wicked and justify the just your cry is a whole the country is corrupt he said leave the matter i understand i am higher than the judges of the earth i see it i am higher than they all nobody can stay my hand when i rise up in my judgment when i begin to pour it down from heaven as they cannot stop the rain from coming down they cannot stop my judgment there is the higher than the highest be comforted he will handle it be comforted that man that has bought up the law court bought up the judges god is saying leave that matter i am higher than the judge of the earth i will handle him just leave it in the hand of god commit it in the hand of god yes though you have escaped you have not escaped though he has escaped he has not escaped because there's the god of repercussion the god that organizes the law of recompense the law of sowing and reaping that is higher than every man on earth higher than the the, the institutions of law upon the earth he regards it he will handle it he will handle it deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 34 and 35 deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 34 and 35 the Bible tells us is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures to me belongeth vengeance and recompense their food shall slide in the time in due time for the day of their calamity is at hand and the things that shall come upon them make haste hear god their judgment is in my stoke already prepared and preserved their reward for what they did is already in my book they are prepared and they are there the seven trumpets, the seven veers, the seven bowls, they're all there waiting for them. Various ways. Perfect, perfect, perfect. To me, belonged vengeance and recompense. Yes. Their food shall slide in due time. You see them running now because the time has not come they will slide and fall they will slide and fall you're mighty in killing others one of these warriors all these warriors that have been invited to fight in various tribal wars was invited somewhere and that day it was his turn to die he said hey i've fought in many places this place is nothing to me but is it in this place i will die your time is up that's why you are dying under small children your time is up in due time you shall slide what about these boys mighty in causing trouble tribal trouble local government put on fire 
the whole state put on fire whole nation their time to slide is there it has been set up at the time little thing will catch them up ahab you're going up to the mountain for your last battle somebody somewhere will not even be aiming at you he will just shoot his arrow to the air and because it is your day to die that arrow will be divinely directed to you little accident will cause it little accident I had the story of a young man mighty in witchcraft. How it is with him now. How his hand got broken and it's no more possible. The, in fact, the, the bone's gone. They had to use iron to hold it now. And the doctor said, no, you, there's no way we can do it again. But I'm in pain every day. Bear it until you die. Your evil day has come nobody can serve you bear the pain for you of course pain in many bear your own no solution you will wish dying but dying will not come so you can suffer it more that's god's judgment and justice the god of recompense the god that organizes repercussion i'm telling you this thing it's true. Thank God you are young. You have many years. Why should your future be mad, be darkened? Why should it be all rain that you cannot move anymore? Yes, that's what God wants you to know. He said, for the day of their calamity is at hand. And the things that shall come upon the meek haste is hastening. Those things, organized things, they are hastening. They're coming to you. They have already left heaven descending. They will strike you at the appointed time. But thank God you're here. May God make this place a salvation for your life. Yeah. Scriptures. Cases of repercussions in scripture. The scriptures, give, uh, uh, the scriptures give us many examples of the cases of repercussions. Number one, Cain's evil against Abel, his brother. Genesis chapter 4, verse 8 to 15. Genesis chapter 4, verse 8 to 15. And it came to pass. Genesis, Genesis chapter 4, verse 8 to verse 15. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? <laughs> Rude boy. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand when thou tillest the ground it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength a fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth verse 13 everybody one to go and can say it unto the lord my punishment is greater than I can bear. Exactly. That's what is coming on you. A great is greater. I told you, you sowed only one corn, but see it now. See what you're harvesting is greater than the corn. It's greater than just one piece of corn. My punishment. The blood. How what, what we can we say about your case now? It's not only the blood of one man. It's not even the blood of a man, women. The blood of pregnant women, the blood of small children, the blood of children in the womb. They say, the Bible said they are crying. 
you denied them living on earth you denied them life on earth you denied them fulfillment of the will of god in the world you denied them who are you i created them now the blood is crying unto me that somebody law hindered me from repenting somebody lord hindered me from doing your will somebody lord hindered me from preaching your gospel somebody lord hindered, and this voice is crying unto you the voice of children are aborted in love are crying out and you say god should keep quiet it's mercy that the evil day in your life has not yet come whether you use this remaining period, this interval, to settle that matter with God. Whether you use this interval, not like him, that God gave him an in interval. Where is Abraham, Abel, your brother, stubborn boy? Am I my brother's keeper? Oh, that man shall not speak again. I'm telling you, blood crying from the earth because you kill it you kill the soul you damage the soul you maimed that man you cause him to be blind you cause his legs to be amputated hey hey the report has gone to the god of creation who created them he has heard and your judgment has been organized waiting for a time the best time Cain cried out my punishment is too much for me when you were doing it I were you not proud God knows how to humble the proud yes Joseph's brethren suffered for the evil they did against him. Genesis chapter 42, verse 17 to 24. Genesis 42, verse 17 to 24. And he put them all together into world three days. And Joseph said unto them the third day, This do and live, for I fear God. If ye be true men, let one of your brethren be bound in the house of your prison. To go ye, ev um, go ye, carry corn for the fam farming of your houses. But bring your youngest brother unto me, so shall your ways be verified. And ye shall not die. And they did so. And they said one to another, we are verily guilty concerning our brother in that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us and we would not hear therefore is this distress come upon us and reuben answered them saying speak i not unto you saying do not sin against the lord the child and ye would not would not hear Therefore, behold, also his blood is required. Joseph's breathing sold him. They carried him and threw him into the pit. They sold him, even removed him from there, sold him to Egypt. How, when did they do this? I think they did this when Joseph was 17 years old. They did this when Joseph was 17 years old. Joseph was in prison and came out to Pharaoh at the age of 30. After how many years? After how many, 13 years, is that? After 13 years. Then there was a period of prosperity according to the prophecy of Joseph. For how many years? Seven years. Seven plus 13 is how much? 
20 years. Now there was a period of starvation that started, I think, for two years. And then the children of Israel came to Egypt. 20 plus 2 is how much? 22 years. Look at can Joseph even didn't die. Just the wickedness they did. These people say it is the blood of our brother. Repercussion. Though hands join in hands. Don't say you have lived in peace after wickedness. Go and uncover yourself. Go and discover yourself quickly. Go and confess it. Don't say you have lived in peace. Don't say you have been covered. 22 years after that act. 22 years. After that act. The brethren are not talking here. They remembered. I, and Reuben said, I told you, I told you that you should not do that wickedness to that boy. I told you 22 years ago. The law of recompense. The law of repercussion. Who told you you have escaped? Are you stronger than God? Are you wiser than God? Is that the day has not come? Yes. Is that the day has not come? That is it. Now, verse 25. Verse 25. So they commune and took Simeon, one of them, and put him in prison. And then he released the children, the other people, to go. Look at verse 24. And he turned himself about from them and wept, and returned to them again, and communed with them, and took from them Simeon, and bound him before their eyes. This Simeon must have been the one that masterminded Joseph's Yes. He was the one that brought up. You know, I told you, my soul come not near her tent, his tent. The tent of Simeon and Levi. The angry people. Simeon must have masterminded this plan. And they got him after 22 years. Singled him out and locked him up. The rest, you can go and I'll go. Ah. <sighs> Can you see your future? You don't really have a peaceful future. You don't. Because of what you did. It's waiting for you. No, it's waiting. You cannot escape it. Law of recompense. Law of recompense. Law of repercussion. David's household suffered for his sin of adultery. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 7 to 14. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 7 to 14. <clears throat> the Bible tells us. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man, thus said the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul, and I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would Moreover, have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore, hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his side? Thou hast killed Uriel the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast 
despised me and has taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will, me, I, I, will, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. For thou this it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel, and before the son. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also has put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. How be it? Because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. Repercussion. What is the benefit of Bathsheba now? Oh, beautiful. What is the benefit of her beauty? Trouble has come to your family. What's the benefit? What is the benefit? What's the her beauty? That you will not obey God. You will not submit to God. Because you have seen a beautiful woman, you have seen the nakedness of a beautiful woman. Oh, I know how I can get her. You know how to add sorrow to your life. You think you can pick her, use her, and be free? Repercussion. Repercussion. I can, you can take away somebody's wife and marry and be free? Repercussion. The evil day will come. You can drive away a woman's husband and take over? Repercussion. The law of recompense. That which a man sows, he shall reap. That which a woman sows, he shall reap, is the law. As sure as the law of gravity. It's a law. David, you were standing in your upper chamber. A righteous man. You sowed Bathsheba bathing because you're on top of the, you're in, the, you're in your stairs. Story building. And you sowed Bathsheba bathing. In her bathroom was she moving on the street it was in her bathroom and you all oh, you saw, why didn't you remove your eyes when you saw her body when you were even seeing holy spirit caution to you you didn't remove your eyes oh you saw her nakedness and you spent time examining it until the spirit gave way for satan then satan made suggestion to your life he said you brought reproach to the name of the lord a pastor Everybody has known you, the psalmists of Israel. With all this goodly psalm, you're spoiling it. You're pouring stones, sand into it, rice. Everybody has known your righteousness. Everybody has known your commitment. Everybody has known your godliness. And you, you got this temptation. You didn't resist it. You say, okay, I will do it secretly. You did it. No, I will do and come and tell God I am sorry. Yes, you had opportunity to even come and tell God you're sorry, but the recompense you must repeat in your life for whatever a man sows, he shall reap. Now, because you have done this to kill Uriah by the sword, the sword shall not depart from your house. They shall be using sword to kill people in your house. We know just one case, but other cases are not put in scripture. Absalom, smite Amnon. They are all but they are both children of, his, of David, the sword in the house. Others may not be recorded here in scripture. I will give your wives, because in those days permission was there to marry more than one wife. So I will give your wives to your neighbor. He shall sleep with them openly. You did it with Bathsheba. You did it with Bathsheba. You did it privately with Bathsheba. People didn't see. I will make people to see the case that will come for your shame. That will come for your reproach. That will come for your embarrassment. They shall sleep with your wives in the open. Absalom did that. The Israel said, you want to take over David? 
show us you hate your father perfectly and the only way you will show it is go to the concubines and sleep with them we're waiting for you we want to watch we want to watch David, I'm sorry. Yes, your sins have been forgiven. But because you gave occasion to the devil to blaspheme. Be careful. You commit adultery and say, hey, God, preserve my daughters. Let not my sons commit adultery, commit fornication. What are you talking about? Did you not open occasion to the devil in your family? Did you not open occasion? To the devil to come into your life. You cheat and say, God, this is my business. Which business does you will not suffer cheating there? Were you not cheating? God should protect you. What selfishness? Are, how selfish are you? You think God is a selfish God? Law of recompense. Law of repercussion. Know it and humble. Know it and humble. Please plead with the God of mercy cry unto him repent Job say in his own depression in his own state sickness the body, his body was smelling to his wife he said if I have gone to see any man's nakedness then let my wife be to other people let anybody come to my wife if I have been committing adultery in my world, in my treasures, in, at my good time, if I had been committing adultery with people, then in this case of my evil day, let my wife be for others. If I have not, I've been keeping myself in righteousness, God of justice and recompense and reward is there that gives every man according to what he has sown. Nobody will come to my wife. That is the world. That is the world. Good for you in your youth. Remember now thy creator in the days of your youth. When the evil day has not come. When you will say, I have no pleasure in them. You have no pleasure because sins now that you're young get jesus quickly and stop those things that will become a problem tomorrow otherwise in your later time you will look back and say vanity of vanities all is vanity the immoralities of my life I, a young man said i've slept with 80 girls i, I think somebody said 500 too, whatever vanity of vanity is is repercussions i'm facing a hunting after me that i am facing when that evil day has not come change up now stop it now turn away from it now you will have a better future yeah law of repercussion king saul's generation were judged for his sinful act second samuel chapter 21 verse 1 to verse 9 second samuel chapter 21 verse 1 to verse 9 very hard case you're even going to be surprised then there were there was a famine in the days of david three years year after year and david inquired after the lord and the lord answered it is for saul and for his bloody house because because he slew the Gibeonites. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sown unto them, and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel and Judah. We have for David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement 
that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord. And the Gibeon I said unto him, we will have no silver nor gold of Saul, nor of his house. Neither for us shall thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What ye shall say, that will I do for you. And they answered the king, The man that co consumed us, and that devised against us, that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the courts of Israel. Let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them unto the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. And the king took the two sons of Respa, the daughter of Eli, Aja, whom she bare unto Saul, Ammonai, and Mephibosheth. And the five sons of Michal, the daughter of Saul, whom she raised up for Adriel, the son of Bazalai, the Meholatite. And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them in the hill before the Lord. And they fell all seven together and were put to death in the days of harvest in the first days, in the beginning of barley harvest. Get the story. In the days of Joshua, the Gibeonites came to Joshua, the Amorites, and said, we are living very far. Make peace with us. We will serve, we will make peace with us. Let's live in peace. They showed him old food, old days, see our, the dust of our feet, Joshua hastily made peace with them. And in the, as they were destroying various places, they discovered that they were just close to them. What can we do? We have made a covenant with them already. Let's turn them to slaves. Let them be serving the children of Israel. Hewing wood, carrying water, and anything. So that is how they lived among them. Until when Saul became king, Saul wanted to show Israel that I am, yes, I want to keep the commandment of God. Hypocrite. And started killing these Gibeonites. The God of justice will not take that. You made covenant with them as a nation. Why are you doing contrary? Why are you breaking the covenant? The God of heaven will not take that. So, he killed them. There was silence. Nobody appeared to say anything for quite a long time until Saul died and David took over as a king. Saul died and David took over as the king of Israel, at this time, God, it is the evil day I'm telling you that is waiting. The evil day came. Farming, it resulted in farming in Israel. Rain was not there on earth for three, maybe just little, little, for three good years. One year, two years, three years. Eh? God, we're dying. What's happening? This, I thought it was nature, but it's not nature. Something is responsible. Yes. The law of sowing and reaping. Israel killed the Gibeonites in innocency. I must revenge. You must suffer. Israel must suffer for it. Ah. What do I do? Go to the Gibeonites and appease to them. 
Go and ask them what they want you to do to be peaceful, to forgive you. This thing had been in the Gibeonites or in their hearts. It has been a bitterness in their hearts. They had looked at Israel, not a righteous nation anymore. Where are you breaking your covenants? You are not righteous anymore. David go back to them and settle it. So David went to the Gibeonites and said, Oh, I discovered the famine Israel is passing through year after year. It's because the Lord told me we did evil against you. Uh, Saul so, uh, slew your, your people. They say, yes. Then what can we do? They say, we don't need money. We don't need money. We don't want anybody in Israel to die. But that man that devised evil, although he has died, let seven of his sons be given to us. We shall hang them before the Lord. Visiting the iniquities of the fathers to the children and to the children's children. Where are the people? Seven sons. One of the sons one of the great uh, grandson of Saul, Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, was with David. For that he, he escaped. Only righteousness will make you escape. Child, your righteousness will give you escape. From the judgment that is coming from your fathers, your righteousness shall give you escape. Then, there were two sons that were born to son by a woman, a concubine. David picked them. There were two other sons of Saul. Oh, the daughter of Saul gave birth to five, five children who were, who were men. And Micah raised them up, released them. Your mother was a daughter to Saul. And she must inherit the sin of her father. And it, you, her father has died and your mother is not enough. We need each other children to share. So seven, those five children, they carried them with the two sons born to a concubine and they delivered them unto the Gibeonites. They carried them and hung them before the Lord. Repercussion. See your children. Saul had died. Saul had died. Evil of his life followed him. The law of recompense. The law of repercussion. For the evil a man does. For the pit a man takes for others. So they hung them. God. Did you allow that? It is in my law. That I visit iniquity of a man to his children. To his children's children. If those children don't know me. And these other seven children don't know him. It's Mephibosheth that had come to know the Lord through David. He escaped this thing. You will escape. You will escape. Because you have come to know the Lord. And after they hung them, rain started falling. I said, God says, I will organize the recompense. I know. I know why I didn't do this in the days of Saul. I want to teach Israel a lesson. That don't think you have died and the evil will not follow you anymore. Your children will suffer it. But eh, it's my children, me, I have escaped. Escape in hell? Saul is in hell. Saul is in hell. The children suffering is just the smoke of the jet that is passing in the sky. The jet has gone, but the smoke is in the sky. Repercussion. Repercussion. Judas Iscariot suffered death for Jesus. Acts of Apostles, chapter 1, verse 15 to 20. Acts of Apostles. Chapter 1, verse 15 to 20. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, 
the number of names together were about 120. Mean and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the mist and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers of Jerusalem inasmuch as that field is called in their proper tongue Aseldema. That is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another tear. <laughs> Simple. What a desolation on Jordan for 30 pieces of silver. For 30 pieces of silver. This little thing you're stealing. For kidnapping. And receiving reward. Give me with this number of million. You don't know what is waiting for you. You don't know. Had you know, you will run out from the forest and cry out. The government look at me. I'm I'm wicked. I want to repent. If you know, attacking the churches of God, they send you to go and carry a minister, a child of God. They send you to, and you, do you know the implication? When Judah betrayed Jesus for 30 pence, he collected the money, but the guilt came upon him later. He carried the money back to them. Take your money. I am, I, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to partake in this, in destroying the innocent man again, but you have given him out. You, it is true you, they were able to come in to arrest him. Judas went and hung himself he fell from the tree and as he came he, he fell by his stomach bah! upon maybe a stone the stomach opened into two the intestines gushed out recompense Jesus said it were better that man were not born that would betray the son of man and they carried the 30 pence and bought a field, which is called Aseldema. He has lost his bishopric. His bishopric let another man take wonderful position in life. Called into gracious position that will judge the 12 tribes of Israel in the end time. He lost it for covetousness. He lost it because he wanted to please the world that are against Christ. See the end. See the end. That's what you need to know. Conditions of peace. All sinners have committed offenses that will spell their doom in the later end. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You particularly might have done a great evil that is haunting your life now or that spell evil future for you such as lying, false result, false certificate, murder, wickedness, acts of witchcraft, immorality, abortions, and kidnappings, and so on. Your present and future security only lies in submission to the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is required of you now is repentance and faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. 2 Chronicles, chapter 7. Verse 13 and 14, he said, If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain in repercussion in my law of judgment. Or if I command the beast, the locusts, to devour the land, 
Oh, if I send pestilence among my people because of their sins and evil, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their love. His promise, repentance, humble yourself. That thing you refuse to confess. All these witches that are not confessing their witchcraft and you're doing it slow, slow over there in darkness. Come out to the light and confess your sin. Otherwise you will reap those acts. The evil day is coming on you speedily. The Lord has taught them up on you. Come out and confess them. Otherwise, judgment will take over you. But on earth and in the light to come. Hell. 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 Come out. If my people will humble themselves and come to me, you're seeing things hot in your way. You're seeing life hot on your way. The Lord said, I shut up the heaven on, on you. I shut up this. I brought those pestilence on your life. I block you. Because it's my day of judgment. Come up and repent. 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 Change. 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 Everybody say change. I say change. Change. That's the only solution. Turn from sin. Come out from sin. Stop it. Come to God. Confess. Repent. Receive Jesus. Receive Jesus. Receive Jesus. Submit to Jesus. Come to the word of Jesus. Obey the, the word of Jesus. Bow to him. That is the, your mercy. It is your wisdom. Escape. Evil is already pursuing. He said they are coming speedily on you. They're coming very speedily on you. Run out from that thing. Come out from that occultism. Evil is coming speedily. The blood of the people you drink are crying in your stomach. They're crying to the God that made them. They're crying to the God that made them. You will vomit it. You will vomit it. You will vomit it. Your blood shall gush out. You will go to hell. The soul that sinned, it shall die. That's the world. That's the word. You can't avert this power. You can't avert this truth. There's no way you will stop it. It will surely come. It's a, it, the Lord said they are coming speedily on you. Speedily. The things are making haste on you. They're coming very fast. Run while there's a little time more. Then I will forgive you. I will deliver you. In Isaiah chapter 1. Verse, eight, verse 18, verse 17. Let's read verse 15 rather to 21. Isaiah chapter 1. The Bible tells us here from verse 15. And we just prayed, for your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yeah, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you make you clean put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes cease to do evil learn to do well seek judgment seek truth relieve the oppressed relieve those people you are oppressing them release those people you tie them judge the fatherless do good to the fatherless plead for the widows Come now, come, come, and let us reason together. See at the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good fruit of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the, with the sword. For the mouth of God, the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Sure, the creator who spoke and the world was created has spoken out your judgment, has spoken out your decay, has spoken out your corruption, has spoken out about your end. You won't end well. But come now. Come now. Come to Jesus. 
Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I give you rest. I will remove that fear from your heart. I will give you peace. I will talk to my Father to forgive you. I came for sin. I came to save sinners. Come to me. I will handle your case. I will appease to my Father for your case. Your sin will be forgiven. My Father will deal mercifully with you. What do you do? Restitute. Restitution and holy living. Yes. In Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 14 to 16. Ezekiel 33, verse 14 to 16. The Bible tells us here saying, Again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. If he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right. If the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed. Walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity. He shall surely live. He shall not die. None of his sins that he had committed shall be mentioned unto him. He had done that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live. Go and restitute. The evil you do, you did it to him. Go and tell him you're sorry. Go and confess. Go and plead with your father. Plead with your mother. Plead with your brother. Plead with your neighbor. Plead with the church. Settle it. Reveal yourself. Don't sit down on blood. 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 Confess. Otherwise, it shall be your blood very soon. Otherwise, it shall be your blood very soon. Come out quickly. Confess. Do restitution. Go and apologize. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. Then live righteous life. Live holy life. No more sin. No more iniquity. No more living in the forest. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. My brother, leave him there. No more in the forest. No more living in pits. Hunting people. Get out. Judgment will come upon you there as the rain on the sky. The judgment is getting faster. The judgment is getting faster. Escape! Escape! Your colleagues will suffer it. Come in. You know, allow anybody to want to come to come in. Your colleagues are suffering it. They will surely suffer it. They will surely. You, it is as you escape to Jesus. Do your restitution. Do your restitution. It is as you escape to Jesus. It is as you do your restitution. And clear up the way. Otherwise your tomorrow is doom. Your tomorrow is darkness. You shall carry the mountain upon your head. Suffocate. There's a God of justice in heaven. There's a God of truth. In heaven. There's a God of recompense. That organizes the percussions. Yeah. Does the world. Yes. And you child. Turn to Jesus. Your father has laid a bad foundation for you. Your great grandfather. Has laid a bad foundation. The only escape. Jesus. Everybody shout. Jesus. Jesus. Continue to call that name. That is the escape for you. Call his name. Let him hear. Let her hear. That is the escape. Yes, yes, otherwise, a bad foundation has been laid for you. A bad foundation has been laid for you. It's only Jesus. It's only Jesus. Amen. The book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel, the Bible tells us in chapter 18, verse 14 to 19. Ezekiel 18, 14. To 19. Now, lo, if he begat a son that seeth all his father's sins, 
which he had done and consider it and do it not such like that had not eaten upon the mountains neither had lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel had not defiled his neighbor's wife neither had oppressed any had not with withholding the pledge neither had spoiled by violence but had given his bread to the to the hungry and had covered the naked with a garment that had taken off his hand from the poor that had not received usury for increase had executed my judgments and walked in my statutes he shall not die for the iniquity of his father he shall surely live that's the world that is the only way otherwise it's better you were not born because you have a bad foundation has been laid. The only solution, turn to Jesus now. Everybody rise up upon your feet. Turn to Jesus now. Turn to Jesus now. Turn to Jesus now. Turn to Jesus now. Come forward and give your life to Jesus now. That is the only way. That is the only escape for you. Come forward quickly. That is the only way. Otherwise your tomorrow is doomed. A bad foundation has been laid for you. You lay, you're even adding to it because of your sin. You're even adding to it because of your wickedness. And the law of recompense will hang you. It's hanging upon you. It's hanging upon you. Law of recompense. The repercussions of life. The repercussions of life. The repercussions of life. Is surely coming. Is surely coming. They are making haste. They are making haste. They are making haste. Cry. Call on Jesus. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. Quickly come and call upon him. Rush. Rush, rush, rush. Come and call. Let him serve you because the future is bad. Call upon him now. Submit to Jesus. The future is bad. You have done so much wickedness. You will reap it. You will reap it. You will reap it. The fires of hell shall not shall, 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 shall not cease upon your life. It shall not cease upon your life. It shall not cease upon your life. Consuming fire. What shall be given to a wicked tongue? Burning coals of fire, burning coals of fire, burning coals of fire, burning coals of fire. What shall be given to the wicked boy? Judgment, 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 judgment. Cry out for your salvation. Cry out, oh girl, full of abortions in your life full of wickedness and murder you are a higher killer you are a higher killer they'll be hiring you to do evil they even hire you to poison people judgment judgment it shall come on you you will die by poison god will handle your case he will organize you he will organize your judgment the creator will organize it the creator will organize it repay repay turn from your evil he will deal with your hardened heart he would deal with your heart. He knows how to do it. Who made the heart? Is it not God? Is it not God? Who made the heart? Is it not God? He will handle you. He will handle you. Run to Jesus. 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 The little thing you think is little, you will reap greater things. You will reap greater, reap greater things. Greater reap. You will reap it. You will reap it. Whatever a man sows, whatever a man sows, he shall reap the law of recompense everybody whatever sin you have committed that your children shall come and suffer plead with god plead with god whatever sin you have committed that will open the door to satan in your life open the door to satan in your children in your family cry and plead cry and plead cry and plead cry and plead plead with god plead with god plead with god plead with god forgive me lord Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. I have done foolishly. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he shall reap it. The evil you are doing, you will, you will reap it. You won't go scot-free. Your day is coming. 
your day is coming it's coming with speed it's coming with speed it is called the evil day of your life Plead with God. Plead with God. Plead with God. I want to see serious prayer from the leadership. I want to see serious prayers from the leadership. Cry to God. You are a human being yourself. You are a human being yourself. Remember your yesterday. Plead with God. Make sure there's no backsliding in your life. There's no backsliding in your life. Cry to God. The God of mercy. The God of mercy. The God of mercy. you shall reap you planted you shall harvest because it is our Lord the law of God you sowed you shall reap you planted you shall harvest because it is our Lord the law of God you sowed you shall reap you planted you shall harvest because it is our Lord the law of God you sowed you shall reap you planted you shall harvest because it is our law in the law of God you sowed you shall reap you planted you shall harvest because it is our law the law of God you sowed you shall reap you planted you shall harvest because it is our law the law of god you sowed you shall reap you planted you shall harvest because it is 
Allah, the law of God. You sowed, you shall reap. You planted, you shall harvest. Because it is Allah, the law of God. You sowed, you shall reap. You planted, you shall harvest. Because it is Allah, the law of God. You sowed, you shall reap. You planted, you shall harvest. Because it is Allah, the law of God. You sowed, you shall reap. You planted, you shall harvest. Because it is Allah. Jesus name we pray may God show your mercy may God show your mercy may God show your mercy lay hand upon your heart and say god show me mercy i am doomed i am doomed my tomorrow is not good my tomorrow is not good help me god deliver me forgive me god i repent i won't do it again cover me with your blood jesus wash me with your blood jesus wash me with your blood jesus i did evil actually forgive forgive i give my life to you cover me from the anger of god deliver me jesus from the anger of god i will do it no more forgive i will correct my ways I will confess i will not be ashamed i confess to the church i confess to my husband i confess confess to my wife if i'm married i'll confess to my parents i'll confess to where i have sinned god let me not die tell him oh lord let me not perish plead with him let me not perish Jesus name we pray the message you have just listened to is a production of holiness revival movement worldwide holiness revival movement worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades Revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4348. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 
Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe.
yourself burn for my sins Oh Lord Jesus You are the living Savior Jesus I believe in you I believe in you Cause you are my Lord and Savior you are I believe in you, you are the living Savior. I believe in you, I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. You Lord. are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. Oh, oh, oh. you are the living Savior. I believe, I believe, I believe you.